Hey everybody, JK here from Animator Island. Got a quick video for you today because I came across something that I found interesting and maybe you will too. The other day I was perusing the inevitable gallery of humanity's great works of art. Translation, I was endlessly scrolling through Pinterest again. And I came across this image. It's pretty nice, right? It immediately grabbed my attention and drew me in, which is what all art should do for its audience. But as I sat back and enjoyed this piece of work, something was wrong. Something felt wonky. So I did the only logical thing. I downloaded it, put it into Procreate, and then spent the better part of an hour desperately trying to figure out exactly what it was that was off about this piece. What do you mean that's not normal? Yes it is. Get out of here. Now, the skilled artist who did this piece didn't ask for my advice or suggestions on how to make it better, but I think analyzing a piece of art is one of the best ways that we can build our art intuition. And art intuition is what makes us even better than we are today. So, I thought we might break this down and see where things maybe went awry just for our own personal art intuition's sake. The first thing that came to mind about what might be bothering me was related to tone and contrast. To check this, I made a new layer, filled it with black, and then set that layer to color. This instantly gives us a look at the value without all that hue getting in the way. And sure enough, what you see here is there isn't a ton of contrast going on. I took a few minutes to mess with the brightness settings and the curves, and with just a few tweaks, we came out with this new version. Flipping back and forth, you can see how just a change in contrast and nothing else can make a pretty dramatic difference. This is because contrast, if you didn't know, is super important. If you want to know why, you can check out this video, which covers the details of the subject of contrast. In the meantime, I highly recommend that every so often you check the tone and value of your own pieces. You could do that using similar methods to what I used here, but you want to do it early in the process and late in the process, because if you can get more contrast in your piece, it's probably going to be a lot better. I could stop there and kind of want to because contrast is that important, and I don't want you to miss that video by Ferdinand, but we'll call this bonus content and look at a few things that we could do to continue to make the piece better from there. But I'm leaving the link on the screen constantly so you don't forget to go check out that video on contrast. It really is that important. The next major issue is the lack of a focal point. There's so much going on in this piece that the audience isn't sure where to look first. Is the most important part this little monster slaying fellow down here? Or is it the grumpy creature in bed that we should give our attention to? Then there's this little guy hanging out over here, and also this bird which, as an aside, drives me a little bonkers because of the parallel tangents going on with this rock, everything lining up in a way that actually hurts the aesthetic. Plus, going back to contrast, each of these characters is of equal size, which means we don't know who is most important. Getting a little contrast in there would make a big difference. When it comes to contrast, our eyes are generally drawn to the place in any piece of art with the highest contrast. This might be brightness, or saturation, or size, or even movement, since we're animators and get to mess around with the fourth dimension as well. If we look at this piece, though, we find three major points of contrast all competing. They're here with the eggs, here with the little emoji bubble, and here with that darn bird thing again. That bird thing is really making me mad, I can't even tell you, but I digress. These three points are where the eye immediately wants to go, and that's a problem on two fronts. First, because like I said, they're all competing. And secondly, because each one threatens to lead your eye away from the artwork. If your eye goes up here to the eggs, it's easy to continue on and wander off the canvas. If down here, the same thing because of how close they are to the bottom. We generally want to put our points of contrast in places that will lead the audience's eye back into the art, not out of the frame. If we tone down those high points and make our highest point of contrast more toward the center of the piece, we hold our audience's attention for longer because their eyes will keep being drawn back into the art rather than out of it. I made those changes as best I could, but there was still something bothering me. And it isn't even related to the bird, because if I edit him out completely, there's still a major problem. 
It took me a long time, but I finally figured it out. There's an inconsistency of lighting in this piece. It's subtle, but it's there. And sometimes the subtle problems are the worst ones because it makes someone want to like a piece of art, but not like it and not even know why. Anyway, let's take a look at some of these shadows. So let's start just right here with this cloud. Because of where the shadows are on this cloud, we can tell that the light source is coming from this direction and slightly in front of this cloud. So all of the light lit area are here and all the shadow are down here. So far, so good. Makes sense, yes? Okay. Things like this tiger bear head also follow that same lighting pattern and everything is fine and dandy. The problem is then we get to some strange areas that don't make sense anymore. For example, this guy right here. I'm not exactly sure where this guy is positioned compared to everything else because it seems like he should be in shadow, right? If this is a giant form, then things that are inside that giant form should be in shadow. And sure enough, we have this harsh shadow right here, but the harsh shadow just kind of jams its way inside that cave, which doesn't really make any sense. If we wanted to do this correctly, most of this guy needs to be in shadow. And yes, that, you know, dramatically reduces our visual point with that guy, but that would be how we would have to do it. So that was a little bit confusing. The other big thing that doesn't make a lot of sense is this right here, this back of the cave. In order for this to exist, the light has to be kind of coming in this way. Otherwise, that's not going to be lit up. Now, there's such a thing as taking artistic liberties, but the difference between this arrow and this arrow is a little too big unless you're going to have another light source. And if you are going to have another light source, then it needs to reflect other things like this, which would then not be in shadow. So anyway, the point is there's a bunch of shadows that don't really make a lot of sense in this piece, and that's really harming everything else about it. Well, that about wraps it up for today. I said this was going to be a short video, and well, it turned out not to be. But let me leave you with a few takeaways. Number one, make sure that you do analysis like this to continue to build your art intuition. It really helps to develop your skills. Number two, go watch that contrast video. I mean it. Contrast is super important. I can't say it often enough. In fact, I might even be crazy enough to say that contrast is the number one most important thing for you to develop in your art. It really is that vital. And number three, uh, oh, I guess there is no number three. Um, well, like and subscribe because Animator Island will be back soon to bring you more tips, tricks, and tutorials related to art and animation. Until then, see you next time.